Hello, and welcome to the Pacific Coast Television Recording Studios. My name is Pete Shoemaker, and I have been a Pacifica resident for over 30 years. And among the many things I love about living in Pacifica is the lively art scene we have here. And I'd like to introduce you to a new member of that arts community, the Phoenix Opera Company. I'm here today with Osvaldo de Leon, who is the founder and director of the Phoenix Opera Company, and Elizabeth Patterson is a member of the company who sings leading roles in the productions. So, Swallow, welcome. Hi. So, to start off, uh, how about you tell us about your musical background and how you came to Pacifica and why you started the Phoenix Opera? Uh, well, so a little bit about my musical background. So, I started, I'm originally from Mexico, uh, Monterrey, Mexico, and I, <clears throat> I was very lucky. I went into the conservatory and my piano teacher, who happens to uh, be a great piano performer, he was also an orchestra conductor for opera. And so since I was 16, 17, I was in, you know, assisting him, turning pages for him in rehearsals. And as I grew, grew, grew up, I just wore every hat that you can think of in that small local company. I was the assistant for the music director. I was the assistant for the stage director. I did props. I did stage, set hands. I was the pianist of the choir. I was the choir conductor. So. It, it just little by little, you know, through the ten years of the conservatory, I just, I just get got more involved with opera as it went, and so, you know, I finished my my degree in piano performance, but I had also these great experiences with opera, um, and then I came here to the United States uh, to study my master's degree in San Francisco State University, okay. and uh, and well, I mean, the love for opera did not, you know, die. It's just it's just a thing that is part of me now. So. Once I was done with my master's degree in piano performance, I just kept getting involved with opera singers, and and then I started my opera company. Yeah, and so you also um, coach the singers, not only as uh, you accompany yourself on the piano, but so you also did a little bit of vocal training yourself, and so that allowed you to have the training to coach the singers in, mm -hmm. in the opera as well. Right? True, 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 true. Yeah. Uh, well. Um, a lot of learning came through just watching my, te my teacher work with singers. Uh, and then as time progressed and I noticed how much I was enjoying it, I decided to take myself some voice lessons. I am not a singer. <laughs> I do not sing very well, but I am very familiar with the process that, that, you know, that entails behind you know, a good uh, voice, uh, opera voice production. And, so, and then you know, I used that knowledge in order to work with, with opera singers. Right. So you were a trained pianist in, in Mexico, and then you came to San Francisco State to um, do your further studies. Mm -hmm. And then you uh, got, uh, how did you get to Pacifica from there? So let's take, pick it up there. Well, um, it was a very, it was just a very serendipitous thing. Uh, <laughs> I just heard from a friend that the Spindrift School of Performing Arts was looking for a music director for the musical performances uh, with children. Uh, summer camps and their productions and so I just started uh, working with them and the more <laughs> the more I worked in musical theater honest be, be, be told I realized the less I liked musical theater but the more I worked with with the students and in this community I really just got in love with the community, community yeah. so uh, you, knew your, you knew your niche was opera yes okay so you're a director of a school here and then, somehow, he has this grandiose idea to start an opera company. As anybody <laughs> knows, opera is a hugely time-consuming and expensive venture. It's the kind of thing you kind of have a few beers and think, oh, I can do this, and then you wake <laughs> up the next morning and think, oh my god, what did I do? So tell us about how you started the idea for this. Well, um, it came from a long time ago, as I was you know, still back in Mexico. I Actually, I got a grant from the, from the state government to produce a small opera. And I loved the experience. I loved the experience of doing opera in the smaller scale. I, to me, uh, it gives you much more flexibility on the type of repertoire that you can put on, and uh, it allows you to be more experimental in how you mm -hmm. put it on, much more creative, in my right. opinion. And I just love the experience. And since then, I just fantasize of having my own, own opera company. And then here in the United States, when I, after I finished my degree, I came, uh, in, you know, I became involved with some other opera companies as a pianist or as a director, and I just 
told myself, you know, I think I, I should I can just, do this. I can do this and I should be doing this. Okay, uh, there you go. So we'll pause the story there and we'll, <laughs> and we'll take Elizabeth. Now this is Elizabeth Patterson. She is a soprano who sings, who's been with the company since its beginning, and she sings a lot of the leading roles. So Liz, we'll call you Liz, um, how did you get into singing? Uh, when did you join Phoenix? And uh, what's been your experience since you've been there? I came from a musical family. Mm -hmm. I came from a family of accordionists. <laughs> my mother, my father, and my brother all played accordion. <laughs> As you can imagine, she has heard every accordion joke there ever is. Yeah. Probably, yeah. 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 Uh, uh, so it was just understood. Everyone in the family has to play an instrument. Okay. I did a little violin. I didn't like it. I took some piano lessons. I wasn't so good, uh, <laughs> but I always wanted to sing. So uh, that's where I landed. I, I just kept singing. I went to school for singing. I went to Gettysburg College in Pennsylvania and got my bachelor's degree. I went to Duquesne University and got my master's degree in voice performance. Um, I moved out here when my husband got a job out here. My husband is a tech guy, <laughs> of course. Yeah. So, <laughs> But she knew, I found this talking about her just a few minutes ago, she met her husband in middle school. He was a Korean immigrant, Korean immigrant in the middle of Pennsylvania who didn't speak English and sat behind her. So finish up on that story a little bit, then, then we'll connect when she, as you come out here. Yeah, my husband came here when he was maybe 12 years old. We were in the same school together. He sat in front of me in class. He didn't speak any English at the time, but you know we we were in class together, and yeah. we became friends. Uh, we remained friends all through college, and and something just developed. So, yeah, that's that's a unique story. When you met your husband at the, as a twelve-year-old, when you couldn't really speak, you you had to have some other yeah. means of communication. And so, <laughs> it's interesting. so he was out here. You weren't married yet, but he was out here, and then you came out here and got married and started establishing yourself as a singer here. So, talk about right. your first experiences on the West Coast as a singer. My first gig out here was with Opera Cultura, which is in San Jose. That's run by Hector Armienta. Um, Hector Armienta is a wonderful composer, so they do a lot of his original operas. Um, my first gig was La Llorona, which is one of Hector's operas. That's actually how That's I how met, met <laughs> Osvaldo. So he could fill up on that. So you were there because well, of so you, I, so you knew Hector. I would imagine. There's a, is there a no? I, the, the, connection there? So because she performed that opera La Llorona, what three times? Or yes, three, three times. They they produced it three times, and he, she has been singing the same role those three times. And I met her the very first time. And the reason I I, I noticed this is because one of uh, my friends, another friend. She was also in the production, and so I went to see my friend. And then when I heard her sing, when I heard Elizabeth sing, I went to my friend, her name is Alexa Anderson, and I asked her, like, can you please introduce me to, to, to Elizabeth? I, I, she's, she did such a great job, I just want to get to know her. And since then, we just became friends, and little by little, we, you, know, you, it was, we, you know, we were acquaintances, and then we, we became friends, and little by little, just the relationship started to grow, right. and then we started to work together. We started to work together and start things. Okay, well, we'll pause the story there. I guess I'll, I'll weigh in here because I do have a connection with this too. And, and um, like I said, I've been a Pacifica resident for 30 years. And I had an arts career before I had children. Then I came here with my wife uh, in 1989, right? We bought our house during the earthquake in 1889. So <laughs> I raised my children here. It was wonderful, focused on that and my jobs. And then the kids are grown and gone now. And so I, I've been having a chance to get back into singing and acting and that sort of thing. And I've been performing with a group called the Lamplighters in San Francisco, which is a, is a well-known group there. And then uh, two years ago, I found out that there was an opera company in my own backyard. I was thrilled. I didn't, I didn't know about it. It was just starting up. And so I wanted to meet Osvaldo and say, hey, I'm interested. Can I help you out? This is great. And it uh, turns out that there was a little small role that he offered me in, in an opera by Rossini. And it was a big step for me, because I had never been in an opera before. And I had to learn Italian and recitative and all this sort of thing. And it was delightful. And I really, you know, the coaching I got and the people that I met, it was a high quality opera and I really enjoyed it. And I invited all my friends across, that's what you do, you do, hey, come on, I'm in a performance, you gotta come. And I know a lot of people here. So, uh, and he, some of them, most of them were not, you know, regular opera goers and some of them had not even been to an opera before at all. And 
all of them loved it. They just were surprised. You know, they thought opera, you know, okay, I'll be nice, I'll smile, but I really won't like it because it's long and boring, you know, that sort of thing. They, just the opposite. They couldn't stop saying how enjoyed they were. The acting was terrific. It was very funny and very accessible because in the opera, it's in the black box theater at the Spindrift School. Small, but every seat is like front row. You're right there. The sets and costumes are modest, but they're just enough to tell the story. And they've got monitors on either side of the stage where you can see the English translation. So it's really easy to follow and very accessible. So I was happy about that. And now I'm able to help a little bit with some publicity. So it's been really fun. So now, um, Osvaldo, tell us about, you, you have a kind of a unique uh, vision of an opera, not like a standard opera company. So tell us about your repertoire company idea here. Well, um, before that, I just want to touch on something you were, we were mentioning. Um, one of the things that people get very um, put off, so to speak, uh, about opera is the impression that you have to or know much about music or know the foreign language in which the opera is performed. Mm -hmm. And this is, this, is, this is a known problem. And so for, for a couple of years now, um, almost every opera house has translations uh, on a screen. They call it super titles super because they're on top of the stage. And so our version of super, super titles are those two uh, monitors, two TV screens that we have on the sides, which they have the English translation of what we we are doing. So that does break a big barrier between yes. the people yeah. and the and the repertoire, and and then also you know people that they have this impression that you have to know about music, you have to know a lot about music to get involved in opera, and that is not true, in my opinion, because opera has the benefit of having a story that you are observing, mm -hmm. and so. The stories are the, the 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 typical human stories that you see every in you know everywhere, and so it's easily it's very easy to get to relate to to the stories that you see on stage, and so or to feel empathetic to this to the stories that you see on stage. Now, of course, granted, you might like some other more than others, right. but that's just your taste and your person personality. Yeah. But but there's really no um, requirement. That, needed in order to appreciate opera or to enjoy it even. Great. Um, now, so in terms of the opera company, um, I, I've, as I said, I've always enjoyed the idea of having a small opera company. And um, what I, my dream is to have a repertoire company. Mm -hmm. um, that is, which is not done often in opera, it's done mainly in theater. So you have a core group of singers from, I don't know, 10 to, 20 singers, and those singers are the ones who sing constantly during the season. And so it is of my opinion that uh, doing a repertoire, like, uh, a repertoire company like that um, promotes and supports local artists, mm -hmm. first and foremost. And second, the fact that they're you know, performing constantly allows them to grow and to develop their skills in a more uh, consistent and um, a long-term way than just having, you know, um, a gig sporadically, you know, right, once yeah. or twice a year, um, and it it also becomes a, kind of like a relationship with the, the public. The public starts to recognize the artist, yeah. and they uh, the 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 public reaps the benefits of their their improvement. You know, you you start to get much more. Uh, uh, engaged artists, you start to get much more interesting performances. Right. And so it is, in my opinion, it's, it's something that should be looked up on. Well with each other as an ensemble going around right. familiar with each other's styles. And, and so, so, you know, the, the result is always getting Great. better and better. And the audience is the ones who enjoys that benefit. Good. Um, so now the, the Phoenix Opera has an upcoming uh, performances coming up on the first couple of weekends in March. And so let's talk about those. Um, there's two operas involved. And so let's follow. Um, Briefly tell us about the two operas that are there and why you chose them. Well, so the, uh, we have um, a tragedy and a comedy. The tragedy is called Lucrezia, which is based on a poem by uh, William Shakespeare, The Rape of Lucrece. And it tells the story of this ancient Rome noblewoman who was raped by the prince, Tarquino. Um, and according to, to old Roman uh, how do you say it? Historical. Uh, yeah. Historical accounts. Um, this event, the rape of this prince to this noble woman, sparks the revolution against the monarchy, and that's how Rome becomes a republic. So it's 
it is based on very significant what's supposedly, uh, yes, what's yeah. supposedly to be historically accurate events. Almost like a democracy started because of this horrible act. That's, yeah. that's right. And so, um, so I, I really did not have any idea that this opera existed. I started to research on, on operas because I wanted to find an opera to pair the other opera, which is a comedy, with. And so I literally Googled one act operas, and I saw this list, and I just went one by one through that list. And then I just stumbled on, on Lucrez, and I started to listen to it. And I had to stop everything that I was doing in order to focus on what I was listening. The music is gorgeous. The uh, dramatic action is very well written, so that it really takes the audience through this dramatic line in a very effective way. It's beautifully uh, written. And I recently came to discover that this opera has actually not been performed in the United States for the last 40 years. It's only it has, been performed once. It has only been performed in 1979 in New York. Right? In New York. So uh, it is, it's a rare opera that I, I think has just been overlooked, like, you know, like it happens in life yeah. and in art. Um, but I, I am very excited about it. it it's, it's, I, it's been a dream for the last two years Great. to perform, to produce and perform this opera. Great. And I am just very happy that I get to pair that with a comedy, which is Janice Kiki. Okay. Uh, so Janice Kiki is part of a, a triptych of operas by Giacomo Puccini. Uh, he's a very famous opera mm -hmm. composer. La Boheme uh, and things like that. There people learn from that. Yeah. That's right. La Boheme. Uh, Turandot. Yeah. Turandot. Yeah. <laughs> it just blanked. Yeah, Madame Butterfly. There. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. I blanked out. Um, but anyway, so this this is so this triptych is two tr two dramatic operas and then a comedy. And this comedy is actually um, is not based, but the story was um, created out of a little kernel of information on Dante's uh, Divine Comedy. Divine comedy. Yeah. So there's there's when he was explaining about you know the different hells, he just mentioned something about this is Janis Kiki and he's in hell because he can't people out of a will or something to that effect. And that's it. That's it, one line. Huh? That's one line. <laughs> and so the, the writers, the writer of this opera, they just took that, that one sentence to create this whole story. It is hilarious from beginning to end. Um, I, I think people are going to enjoy it a lot. It is just Great. very cleverly written. Everything is done to make people laugh. Great. So now uh, Elizabeth, Elizabeth has a leading role in Johnny Skiki, and she sings one of Puccini's most famous arias. So let's talk about your part there. Yeah, so that aria would be, Oh mio bambino caro, oh dear daddy. <laughs> uh, but you would know it if you heard it. Uh, Google it on YouTube, it's beautiful. <laughs> but it, it's one of those arias that everyone goes, Oh, I, I don't know that. And then they hear it and they go, Oh, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's been in many commercials. Yeah. Right. Uh, uh, so my role. Um, Lauretta is Johnny Skiki's daughter. Uh, she is in love with Rinuccio, who is a member of the Donati family. Uh, the Donati family, they're just a bunch of jerks. <laughs> they're <laughs> just a family full of jerks yeah. who are trying to steal the inheritance of their recently deceased relative. Um, Lauretta, she needs that money too. She needs Rinuccio to get that money so that they can get married. Um, when it comes to interpreting Lauretta, the question is always, well, how good or how bad do you want her to be? Um, Lauretta and Renuccio are usually thought of as the two normal people <laughs> among this group of jerks. So how much do you want them to be normal and relatable versus how much do you want them to actually fit in with this group of jerks. So the opera is completely sung throughout. There's no dialogue. And so in a sense, they only, she can only sing the notes that are there, but there's lots of ways to interpret and ha have attitude to incorporate those character things, even though you have a, a fixed singing line. So talk about how you, how you work with that. Right, so that happens in the musicality. That happens in the tempi that you set, the articulation, the, the phrasing, the dynamics. Well, Think about it. Think about it um, as the way that the way that you speak. You know, anything anything that you say can be 
taken into a positive way or in a negative way. Oh, you yeah, say, right. You say Come good on. You say, <laughs> you say, you, you point, say right? good afternoon, you can be insulting someone, <laughs> yeah, depending on how you say right? yeah. And so it's the same thing with music. So you have a, a certain notes that you're supposed to be singing, but how you, how you perform them, you f the physicality, your facial expression, your body language, it can change and modify what you're saying. And so that's what we play with. Those right. are kind of like the tools that we use in order to, you know, now let's say with this movement and it's gonna become sarcastic uh, or, or not, or gonna be, it's gonna become more lovingly. So those, those are the things that she, she, can, she can use to play with the character. Yeah. Now she is singing one of Puccini's most famous arias that all seasoned opera goers will know. And that's a wonderful opportunity, but also a lot of pressure because people <laughs> have heard it done by the most famous artists in the world and so you've got a lot of, so how do you approach that, an aria like that? Right, right. So there are certain expectations with this aria. Some of them being that you have to have this beautiful, shimmery, sweet A flat that just floats. <laughs> um, also, you need to have some warmth um, and, and weight in the middle range. So I have put a lot of effort into those skills. Uh, but I've also tried to find my own character, find my own voice in the aria. Mm -hmm. um, I like the idea that Lauretta is, um, I guess, a gold digger. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. She loves Renuccio. They, they are in love. Yeah, they are in love. But she also loves the idea that she could marry into this wealthy family and live the lifestyle of the rich and famous, something like Kim Kardashian. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I can relate to that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so you can see a little bit about the depth of preparation that the artists go through. Osvaldo has a vision for this new opera company as an ensemble company to help support actors and, and musicians. And it has worked with Elizabeth. It not just helps her do shows with Osvaldo because she's not doing shows all year round. She has other time. So it's helped her also with other roles, so you can explain a little bit how this is your your any anyone anything you want to sing your career in general is helped by this coaching, the multifaceted coaching that he that he gives you. Osvaldo is very generous with <laughs> with his time um, and his expertise. Uh, he is always very kind and honest. <laughs> so if he doesn't like how I sound, he will tell me, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and that's very very helpful. Um, he coaches me for auditions, for roles with other companies, not just for roles with Phoenix Opera. So all the time I'm working with yeah. him and, and he's giving me feedback and I've really grown yeah. from that. I, I, have an, I have personal experience, like I said, I had a small role in the opera and I got the experience as well the first hand. And, and the audience will see this is a very personal opera and you get to up, you can talk to the people afterwards and come up and see them right outside the stage. And, how really talented they are. And I'm, I'm a singer and I'm, I'm working my way up, it's getting better. And I'm looking for my note in an ensemble of people. I'm trying to find my note in there. And sometimes it's hard to find my note. Osvaldo is the orchestra at the uh, rehearsals and uh, the performances. The orchestra is his piano playing. So not only does he have to direct, he has to play the piano. And these scores are not child's play. They're, they're very <laughs> difficult. So he's at a rehearsal there, playing a full score, turning the pages, and listening to four or five people singing, and he can pick out a note in the middle when I'm having trouble with my one note. So I'm just trying to give you a level of, of musical <laughs> talent and expertise that he has, and it's really impressive to, to meet people like that. So again, any, just, just over time, this just sort of happens now. You, your, your piano playing is automatic and your ears are starting to... No, you practice a lot. Just, <laughs> the listening, uh, over time, rehearsing, you have to get more and more trained with your ear, right? Yeah, well, uh, I mean, that, that comes with the practice. Like, you just develop it as you go and as you get prepared for stuff. But no, I mean, I devote a lot of hours also yeah. to learning all the musical lines uh, so that I can, you know, it's not... You know, it's not like just God went and gave me the, the game. Right, yeah. <laughs> the game, like there you are. Like no, I mean, I really have to put a lot of hours into it. Yeah. And I enjoy it. I love it. I love yeah. doing that. Well, it's a um, treat to be around. Excuse me. I wanna. I just wanna say something. Like, can you kind of touch a little bit? This is something that I did not really uh, thought about when I start. We started to perform it at the Black Box Theater in Spindrift. There is something to be said about when you're experiencing opera singing in a small place, in a small encounter, in a very direct way yes. from the singers. Um, we had the experience, and uh, we had some, some audience members telling, telling us this. Uh, we did Sor Angelica, which is also a, a tragedy. It's very dramatic. 
and it finished. She sang the last note. She dies like everyone dies, yeah. <laughs> like, oh, any, like, 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 oh. like it happens in opera. And no one clapped for about 15 seconds, 10 seconds. It just felt like a long time for people to clap. I was there. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. And, I, and so we were surprised, like, oh, they didn't like it, like, what happened, what's going on? So we had to kind of, like, make a point, like, okay, it's okay for you to clap. And so later on, talking with the audience members, we kind of, you know, candidly asked, like, what they were thinking. And the reaction that we got was surprising. People were just saying, we were just shocked. We did not know how to deal with all of this experience. It was just it was shocking so intense. because so, yeah. it was so intense. Yeah. Having, it, having it so close, being so close there, and, and uh, the soprano, her name is Raika, she was, she's phenomenal. She was very expressive and, and very passionate about what she does. People were just really, really taken it yeah. uh, and excited about it. They just couldn't believe that they could be so moved. By yeah, it. there is a proximity of that, which is a unique feature. Yes. So we're going to wrap up this interview. Thank you for listening so far by reminding you that we have shows coming upcoming on March 6th, 7th, and 8th, and March 13th, 14th, and 15th. They are Friday night, or excuse me, uh, Friday night at 8, Saturday night at 8, and Sunday afternoon at 2 o'clock each, each, each weekend. The tickets are on uh, phoenixopera.com, P-H-E-N-I-X-O-C-O-R-G, I said phoenixopera.org, which you'll see on your screen. And uh, uh, again, my experience is it's a wonderful time to come down. You come down to Pacifica, people out of town, uh, you can, like I said before, you can have dinner and, and all that sort of thing for a fraction of the cost of, of the San Francisco thing with very little traffic hassle. It's a wonderful opportunity to experience the town and experience one of the uh, new cultural treasures of Pacifica. So thank you very much, Oswaldo. Thank you. And Elizabeth. Thank and you. Thank you, thank you so much and, for the uh, We hope to see you at the Phoenix Opera mm -hmm. performances in um, next week, a couple of weeks. So I guess we have another minute or so here to go. Um, one, one suggestion here. Uh, if you want to come down to one of the shows, this is just a little tag on for me. Walk on the beach. Go to Puerto 27, have some Pisco Sours, which is a <laughs> good It Come is over good. Here, it is opera, good. Get out about 10, 10, 30. Maybe go to Grape in the, uh, Grape in the Fog or Nick's and have a little dance or something like that. Enjoy even a night walk on the beach. It's really quiet in Pacific. So it's a really charming place and um, a lot to offer here. And of course, we have many other cultural treasures. We have a performance center, Sanchez Art Center. We have an art gallery. Uh, Sanchez Art Gallery and the Pacifica performances. We have Spindrift players, and so the Phoenix Opera is a proud member of a great art scene in Pacifica. And um, again, thanks for listening, and we hope to see you at our upcoming performances on March 6th, 7th, and 8th, and 13th, 14th, and 15th. Thank you very much. <laughs>